In this tutorial we are going to light this iPhone. It's going to be very simple and the result will look like this in the end. And I'm going to show you step by step how to do this correctly and professionally so that it can be used on the Apple website itself. Now right here we've got our iPhone model and we created this in the past few episodes of this free course. So this is the iPhone and I've already brought in an HDRI and you can do that using AEC HDRI which is a free add-on and you can click right here select the folder where you've got all your HDRI stored and then they will be shown right here and you can change the lighting very easily simply by selecting an HDRI like this. Now I'm going to be using Canary Wharf 4K but what you can also do is go over to the world properties tab go over to uh, color, click on the yellow button and then select environment texture and load in your HDRI which is an EXR file format. So this is the basis of our lighting. The sky strength is set to 1 but we actually want it to be a little bit softer because we have to add some more lights in order to get some cool reflections on this iPhone. So 1 and I'm going to set it to 0.6. So now it's a little bit darker and we can play around with our own lighting as well. But before we actually do that I want to select this entire iPhone. I'm going to press shift D RZ180 and I will bring it a little bit to the front like so G and X and make sure that we actually place it right over here and why am I doing that well let's have a look at our reference image it looks like this and basically it's the same setup so we're going to recreate this exact same setup basically and I do believe that we are following along just fine select this entire iPhone and place it in its own separate collection so I'm going to call it front iPhone for some reason, I'm just going to call it that. Front iPhone G and X, bring it towards this side and uh, lift, let's give it a little bit more space right there because I actually like the camera setup a lot. Now, before we actually use light linking to get some cool lens reflections right over here, let's first set up a basic lighting system to light the edges of the iPhone. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add a light area lamp and I'm going to increase the scale of this ever so slightly and I will press R, Y and rotate it like this, G and C, bring it upwards so we get this cool reflection right here on this edge. Of course we can also R, Z, bring it towards the iPhone just a little bit more and I'm going to click on this little tab right here and now we get into the lighting. So the area looks like this, we can increase the power of it and make sure that we get a cool looking reflection. So when we turn that off it looks like this and when we turn it on we get a very cool looking reflection but this is definitely not the end yet because what I want to do is take this very same area light shift D Z bring it down alt R to undo all rotations R Y 90 and now it's rotated in the wrong direction so R C 180 and I will place this G and X to the side G and Y and I actually want to create a little bit of light right over here. I don't want it to be over there because then it would be a bit too much. It's lit way too far on the entirety of the iPhone. We want to create some depth in this and in order to do that I'm simply going to place it down a little bit more. So here we get a cool edge highlight. Here we get a cool edge highlight. Here there's nothing so that is correct and maybe I'm going to place one more from the side so we get a little bit more of those reflections right over there. So let's do that right now because this one is done as well. Maybe we can make it a little bit less harsh so let's decrease the power to around 88 and that will make it a whole lot more subtle. I'm going to duplicate this area lamp once again. Shift D X R C 180 and now it is on the other side. Now let's see what it looks like we get a little bit of light data right over there. And I do believe that it adds a lot to this entire render. So I'm going to increase the power of this. And maybe we can even play around with the spread because the spread is on 180, which gives a very soft and diffuse light. But we can also set it to zero and that will make it a whole lot harsher. Of course, this is way too harsh. So maybe I'll just increase it a tad bit like so to uh, approximately nine. Maybe I will place it downwards as well. So let's select this area lamp, place it downwards just a little bit uh, to only light up this corner. And let's decrease the strength and slowly but surely bring it back in. Something like this should do the trick. Now this iPhone is lit entirely correct if you ask me. I do believe this looks very good. We've got our edge highlight right over here. We've got a cool highlight right over there. Uh, of course we also need to do the camera lenses. This one is pretty harsh on the side. So maybe what we can do is take this original area lamp and scale it down on the Y axis so it doesn't reach this phone yet. So we can do that automatically for ourselves. 
Now, of course, it doesn't hit the correct angle anymore. So something like this, G and Z. And right here, we've got our cool edge highlight. We've got our cool edge highlight right over here. And let's now take a look at the other phone because I want an edge highlight to maybe reach on this side or maybe this area. So let's just simply copy this area lamp once again, bring it to the side. I'm going to increase the spread to 180 and let's see what it looks like for now. All right, not bad at all, but I do think it's a tad bit too strong. So I'm going to decrease the strength of this and increase it ever so slightly, maybe to 50 watt. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Pretty evenly lit, pretty nice highlights. This looks pretty professional if you ask me. Let's do the lens reflections because this is done for now. I am heading over into this model right over here. And what I've done, I've separated the lenses. And the way I did that is by going into our original camera lens model, selecting the lenses by pressing L, you know, like this. Obviously not this area, but the lens itself. And I press P in order to separate the selection. And now I have the camera lenses separated from the rest of the camera system. Right over here, lenses camera two, I called it. Now, of course, we've got our beautiful texture for this, but there's one problem. I want to have some cool highlights in the lens itself, because if you look at lenses as well as in your camera, uh, it always has this type of reflection somewhere. And uh, the same goes for your eyes, by the way, there's always like a slight white eye uh, light that is happening and we want to reflect that in the lenses but what we cannot do is bring in a let's say point light right over here and we really get this overexposed area it's not really going to work and it's just a lot of hassle it will not work so what i can do is go over to the lenses lenses camera 2 it is called so i'm going to bring in another area lamp right over here but this one's not going to be square it's actually going to be a circle and we're going to change that in the shape right here which is set to square we can set it to disc and that is a circular type shape i'm going to bring this upwards and i'm going to bring this to the front of our lens so it can actually shine on the lens our x and scoof it over towards that side, RZ, and uh, maybe a little bit towards this side. Increase the power of this. And of course, it is way too much, which is why we are going to use light linking. Object properties tab. So let's go over there, go over to shading. Under light linking, we can select new. And now we're going to drag our lenses right in this box, because then the light will only work on the lenses. Right over here, I'm going to drag it in. And what do we have? Everything changed. But something interesting is also going on. You can see the reflections right here. They are happening to our camera lens. Increase the rotation of this just a little bit more because I want it to be on this side. And I will increase the power maybe just a little bit to something like 300. 300 should be fine. And now what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to duplicate the same disc. Shift D and RXX. Let's rotate this around. RZZ, RZ. And let's bring it towards the lens from a different angle. And now we have this cool edge light here as well. It should be rotated a little bit more on the Y axis. Ah, there you have it. Now we have some very cool lens reflections right over here and right over there. And that will actually help sell the effect. It's a small touch, but the details really make it count. This is our final lighting setup. So let me turn off all the lights so you can actually see what it does. This is what we started out with. Let me increase the size of this. But this was the original lighting setup only using an HDRI, and this is what we added to it. So now it looks a whole lot more professional, and I think this is great. You can definitely use this on a website, for example. Now, in order to set up your camera correctly, by the way, you can simply press on one, Alt, zero. I'm going to use an 80 millimeter lens. Then I'm going to zoom this out. 80 millimeter is often used for products, by the way, guys. G and X, I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to increase this size until we reach this entire area. And now I do believe that this is a very beautiful render. Let's make sure everything is centered. So let's go to viewport display. Let's increase the passepartout. And then I'm going to click on center. And it does seem like it is pretty much centered. If it is not, it is a transparent image. So we can always change it later on. Now, if you want to add a background for this, you definitely can. You can simply add a plane, scale it upwards, bring this down. Oh, let's select this, E and C. Let's select those areas, control B. Something like this. So if you want to make a setup like this, 
no problem. You can also use a backdrop and uh, make a setup that looks like this. I'm not going to use a background for this. I am simply going to do it in DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to render this out as a transparent image. And there is one small touch that you can add if you really want to. I am going to add an image, mesh plane, and I'm going to select an image from my pictures and I will call, I will search for um, this background. I'm going to bring in a background like this. And I'm going to scale this upwards. And basically what I want to do is go over to the shader editor, plug this into the emission, leave it in the color as well, so, but emission, increase the strength, and now it's giving off light. And I'm going into this little tab, the object data properties tab, and set it to, let's go to visibility and turn it off in the camera. Now basically what this does is it creates reflections in our right screen. So if you want to have some more reflections that makes it look a bit more natural, you can add an images as planes that will get those reflections right there so you don't have only the LED lights. So that is the way to do that and we've added some reflections very quickly and this is the way our final render looks. You can play around with the light if you want. I taught you how to use the HDRI. I taught you how to make this setup so we get some depth in the scene some highlights on certain areas of the iPhone while other areas are not lit as much. And I also showed you how to make a light linking setup so we can get the reflections in the lenses accurately. That looks a whole lot more professional. And I also showed you how to get a proper screen reflection in the right side of the iPhone. And now your render should be entirely done. It should be entirely finished and it should be pretty good as well. And uh, you can see that we did a pretty good job in trying to recreate something very similar to this that looks actually good enough to be used on a professional website. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.